Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Epic Aircraft achieves FAA type certification. A parachute failed to deploy during Starliner abort test. And the Land Sport Aviation Showcase 19 starts next Thursday. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm Sophie Herlock. The FAA granted type certification to Epic Aircraft for its E-1000 all-carbon fiber aircraft design, ending our rigorous seven-year program the company says will establish a new industry standard in the personal aircraft marketplace. Epic has over 80 confirmed E-1000 reservations from around the U.S., as well as Canada, Mexico, Central and South America, Europe, Russia, and Australia. The first seven E-1000 customer aircraft are in various stages of fabrication, bonding, and assembly, with initial delivery slated to begin this year. Epic has doubled its composite fabrication capacity, invested heavily in tooling, equipment, curing ovens, and refined workflows to accelerate E-1000 production ramp. The company is currently running two production shifts with plans to further expand operations. Production certification is targeted for the first quarter of 2020. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. The Sling 2, a modern, economical flight training airplane for today's pilots. 120 knot crews, sporty handling, sliding bubble canopy, modern glass panel, and dependable Rotax power. Available in LSA or kit versions. Check it out at AirplaneFactory.com. Welcome back. Let's take a quick look at some interesting news flying out of the aviation industry. It's time for today's trip around the patch. U.S. Senators John Thune and Ed Markey are urging the FAA to publish a rulemaking for the remote identification of UAS without further delay and requested clarification on the FAA's plan for any voluntary industry implementation of drone identification. The FAA was directed to develop standards for remote identification of UAS in the FAA Extension Act of 2016. The UK CAA launched a consultation to seek views on a proposal to move new designs of light aircraft weighing between 450 and 600 kilograms from pan-European certification under EASA to national CAA regulations. European regulations allow national regulators the ability to choose to extend their oversight to include these aircraft. The proposals include the views of a working group of general aviation stakeholders brought together to advise the CAA. Steve and Steve Hinton, the father-son duo who have each won national air racing championships and set speed records, will be the keynote speakers at EAA's annual Wright Brothers Memorial Banquet on December 13th. The annual banquet honors the spirit and achievements of the Wright Brothers, and tickets are currently on sale at eaa.org slash wrightbrothers. United States Attorney Jason R. Dunn filed a complaint for civil penalties against Air Methods Corporation. The complaint alleges Air Methods violated FAA regulations by operating an emergency services helicopter on 51 flights. After having been notified by the FAA, the helicopter's pitted tubes were severely corroded. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research, and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. Und einem globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies, and we stand behind you. One of the three parachutes designed to return the Starliner space capsule to Earth failed to deploy during Monday's pad abort test. 
but NASA officials said the system was designed to work with just two. The test was designed to verify each of the Starliner systems will function not only separately but in concert to protect astronauts by carrying them safely away from the launch pad in the event of an emergency prior to liftoff. This was Boeing's first flight test with the Starliner as part of NASA's commercial crew program. During the test, Starliner's four launch abort engines and several orbital maneuvering and attitude control thrusters simultaneously ignited to rapidly push the spacecraft away from the test stand. Five seconds into flight, the abort engine shut off as planned, transferring steering to the control thrusters for the next five seconds. The demonstration took only about 95 seconds from the moment the simulated abort was initiated until the Starliner crew module touched down on the desert ground. Sport Aviation's last big event of the year is just a few days away. The DeLand showcases an annual three-day event focused entirely on recreational flying and sport aviation. The showcase is held at DeLand Municipal Airport from the 14th to the 16th and a location known as the Athens of Florida for its rich and creative culture. More than 100 exhibitors will offer visitors access to all kinds of sport aircraft, ultra lights, tripes, rotocraft, power parachutes and paragliders, engines, avionics, pilot gear and flight schools. Enjoy demo flights, interactive workshops, educational forums, keynote speakers, live music, underwing camping, pre-owned aircraft sales, and more. The Aero News Network crew will also be there providing plenty of coverage from the grounds. We hope to see you there. And that wraps up this week, everyone. Thanks for tuning in, and please subscribe and check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. To stay up to date on the latest aviation aerospace news, just head over to aero-news.net. There will be no Airborne Unlimited on Monday in honor of Veterans Day. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you on Tuesday. Thank you.